Greetings everyone. In today's video, we'll be taking a look at the newest character release with the Skyward Blaze update, Eachel the Cub. Eachel is a kinetic sub DPS sustain unit. She belongs to the shotgun wielding class of characters and specializes in minor crowd control and healing. Her standard skill, Territorial Patrol, allows her to leap forward a short distance, gathering nearby targets in close proximity, dealing kinetic damage. After Territorial Patrol hits a target, Eachel recovers HP, and this healing is increased by an additional 5% for every target hit, up to 25%. After a successful hit with Territorial Patrol, her next two shots will become Gust of Wandering Shots allowing her to fire two shots at quick succession, dealing piercing AOE kinetic damage. Her Neuronics clusters for Territorial Patrol will allow Gust of Wandering to no longer consume ammo and increase the max number of targets that Gust of Wandering can hit from five to seven. Her support skill, Savage Pounce, allows her to pounce forward dealing minor kinetic damage, knocking back surrounding targets and heals the on-field operatives. Her Neuronics cluster enhancements allows Savage Ponce to stunt targets on hit and increase the potency of the heal it provides by 20%. This heal is fairly strong and is likely the best single instance healing skill in the game. It's important to note that you do not need to hit a target with the skill to trigger the heal. Simply headbutting the ground is a good way to trigger the effect. Her ultimate, Unyielding Rise, allows her to transform into her hybrid form and launch a flurry of attacks against the enemy, healing all allies. In addition, she will generate up to five icebound claw stacks based on how many targets were hit. One stack will disappear every 10 seconds and heal the on-field operative. If the on-field operative's HP is less than 30%, two stacks are consumed instead to provide a greater heal to the operative and grant a short window of invulnerability. When there are less than two stacks remaining, all stacks are consumed to provide an attack buff to all allies. Her Neuronics cluster for Unyielding Rise further increases the potency of the heals provided, as well as a faster charge rate if the number of Icebound Claw stacks gained after it is cast is less than two. This ability sounds pretty good on paper, a team-wide heal capable of topping up all of your operatives, has great AoE, and good damage potential just sounds too good to be true. But that's because it is. Just like anything that isn't fan service in Snowbreak, you won't have to look hard to see its flaws. Due to this ability's 100 energy cost, the fact that Eachel is a shotgun user, which means it already takes an eternity to charge her ultimate, and of course, we can't forget about the fact that some genius thought it was a good idea to have all operative share a single ultimate meter. Which all translates to, you will rarely ever see this thing in action, unless you go completely out of your way to make it happen. I honestly still have no idea why all characters share a single meter for their ultimate, or why S energy is a thing for that matter. Even though skills already have built-in cooldowns. But I'm not a game dev so I guess it must have made sense to someone. Her passive Forest's Favor increases her healing bonus by 20% at level four. And for each 100 alignment index she possesses, the healing bonus is increased by an additional 6%. When it comes to weapons, the new Blitzing Fangs is going to be her best in slot. This will further increase her healing effectiveness, ultimate skill damage, and can provide a pretty nice 1080 attack buff to the team at max stacks. In order to get max stacks, you'll need to heal the team for 10,000 HP. The attack buff will remain active for about 20 seconds, but gradually get weaker over time. It doesn't really specify, but I am assuming as long as you keep healing, you can continuously refresh the stacks and buff duration. Since this buff is team-wide, this weapon will increase both her personal damage and her support capabilities. Rock Python from the event shop is going to be our free-to-play best in slot. It will allow us to keep the improved healing effectiveness from her signature, as well as providing a 12% attack buff at tier 5, if the target she is healing is already at max HP. She does have an interesting interaction with Mechanized Cop, a weapon whose magazine only hold a single shot ordinarily. 
but after using her standard skill, you can get three shots off since two shots from her skills are generated from thin air. Lapis Lazuli is also a pretty good option for support Eachel, although you will be trading off the healing effectiveness from Python for a higher attack buff to teammates. For logistics, the new Lux squad is tailor-made for her. The two-piece will increase her healing effectiveness by 24%, and the three-piece will allow her to gain stacks of Winter Fleece. When the equip operative performs a heal, the Winter Fleece stacks are consumed. Each stack consumed will grant an additional 5% bonus to her healing effectiveness. Since her heals scale off of her attack, try to stack as much attack stats as you can in your talents, as well as bonus alignment index, to boost her healing effectiveness. U Energy is also a good choice, but definitely prioritise the attack and alignment index over it. For manifestation, M1 looks pretty interesting. This will essentially allow her icebound marks to act like a safety net when she has less than two in her possession. Once the on-field operative's HP falls below 30%, it will activate and prevent them from dying. The rest of her manifestations are pretty mid, or I could just be lacking the foresight to see their value. Because she is a healer, you can run her on any team you want. But if you want her to ever get that ultimate up, you'll likely want to run her with Tess. Or just ignore her ultimate altogether. Again, not really sure why all characters have to share a single ultimate meter, or why S energy is even a thing. A lot of the synergy this character and a lot of other characters could have had together are just completely neutered by these two design choices. Eachel the Cub is without a doubt a pretty solid healer. Although her kit wants her to be able to fit the sub DPS role, she isn't really that good at it currently. The only way I could see that working is if she was a burst support capable of spamming her ultimate in a relatively manageable time frame before switching out to your main DPS. At the moment, Etchel is not a character I would recommend to new players. If you have the Observer and Quiet Quitter build, I would not recommend going out of your way to pick this one up, especially when two of the best units in the game, Shadowcar and Acacia Kaguya, are just around the corner. Etchel feels like a four-star, and I really hope she gets the Katya treatment. If I had the opportunity to make some changes to her kit, or the game in general, these are the changes I would make. One. Give each character their own ultimate charge meter and remove S energy from the game. 2. Reduce her ultimate energy cost from 100 to 60. 3. Allow her to gain ultimate energy every time she triggers a heal. 3 energy from her standard skill, 5 energy from her support skill, and 5 energy every time an icebound claw mark is consumed, even if she is off field. 4. Improve the gathering effect of her standard skill and grants it a second charge, but the second charge does not heal, but instead auto-reloads her weapon on final blows with it. Obviously, these aren't the best of changes, but it would allow her to become a burst support and play into that sub-DPS role without too much changes to her kit. Anyway, as things are right now, this character just doesn't feel like a five-star. So, unless you're simping, there is really no reason to go out of your way for this one. What do you guys think about Eachel? Is she fine as is? Or would some changes be welcomed? Until we meet again, friends.